God, it's Thomas the Franchise. Back to life, back to reality, back to life, back to reality. Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine. Today is a glorious day because my Denver Broncos got that dub last night. As you saw your boy doing a little dance, you know, just a little shuffle, little shuff daddy, little shuffle up, I guess. Nah, but I'm extremely happy we got the win. It's always hard to win in the NFL. I think they played well through three quarters. They kind of gave it up late in the fourth quarter. Had to make it exciting. Had to scare the shit out of me. But the home field advantage, the defense, defense wins championships, no fly zone. We hung on. That started my week off right Right. My biggest concern going to the game was stopping the run. We did that, but now we have Zeke Elliott coming to town next week. I'm nervous. All my Cowboy fans, let's get it in. Let's talk some shit. Let's have fun this week, man. Let's enjoy a great game. I'm just really excited for this one, and I'm very happy we have home field advantage because I do think the Cowboys have a better offensive line. I think they have a better run game, and I think that we could be in some trouble, but the home field advantage will hopefully even it out. As far as fantasy this weekend, man, I'm in six leagues. I told you before, I went three and three, 50-50 split. It's tough to go six and I mean, when you're in six leagues, it's just tough. I went three and three, and then I won like $79 on DraftKings. So not that bad, you know what I mean? It's an extra 79 bucks. I did do a little bit of research. I'm targeting some people this week. I might do some fantasy sleepers later on in the week for you. Maybe some people you can pick up off the waivers if you need some help at different positions. If that's something you guys like to see, let me know, and I'll go ahead and do that in the next vlog. But for today's vlog, man, a couple different things going down. I'm gonna go ship out some shoes. I sold some shoes on StockX, so I gotta prepare that, ship those out. Also, Ryan, my guy, I am so sorry, man. I still got to send him back his linen khakis. I've been linen slacky on the linen khakis. Really apologize about that, bro. I'm about to send them out today. I'm sending those to you. I'm sending the shoes off to StockX. I'm getting that stuff done today. And then we're also going to take a look at the Jordan 1 bread fly knit. I was able to pick those up on Saturday. Got super lucky. I'll tell you all about that when we get into the review. But that is the shoe we'll be reviewing in this video and taking a look at. But that is really all that's going on today, man. Oh, also, just to let you know, YouTube did reach out to me, said they are suspending the last vlog because someone reported it as a racial hate video. So that's where that stands, which is kind of a shame, man, because I feel like we we're really making some headway in the comments. Like, yeah, there were some hateful comments, but there were some really good conversations in there too, man. And not even just in the YouTube comments. People that reached out to me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, DMs. I had some really, really good conversations with people and that was the whole point of the video, man. It wasn't supposed to be hateful. It wasn't supposed to be racially motivated and hate-filled like that. It was just me giving my opinion on a situation and being a white guy, that's where it immediately goes is, oh, he's a racist. Oh, he hates black people. There was a lot of people that were trying to lump in every single black case, racial profiling case, every Black Lives Matter thing into this one situation and that's not what it was, man. You can't do that. It was strictly me giving my opinion on one situation. It was to start a conversation. It was a conversation piece. You guys got to understand, man. I come from a sports talk show background. I hosted a sports talk show in Denver here for two years. My job daily was to break down sports. It was to analyze sports stories, break down sports stories, and create a conversation piece. That's what I did daily for two years. That's what I do, man. And as I was talking to my friends about it, do you think every single black friend of mine agrees with that opinion? No. Hell no. But they come at me respectively with their opinion. We go back and forth. We debate. I maybe opens my eyes to some things I didn't think about. I maybe opened their eyes to some things that they didn't think about. And that's really it. It doesn't get any deeper than that. We don't go any deeper than that. It doesn't get, oh, you're white. You're being racist. It doesn't go there. But there were a lot of people in the comments that immediately went that direction. And it just, that's not, that was not the point. You guys missed the point of the whole video. Like that wasn't the point. And I get it, man. You didn't like the opinion. You became defensive. It got emotional. And some people started to attack me as a person, as far as a racist or white supremacist or all this stuff. And I'm not going to get into all that. There's no reason for me to sit here and try to defend myself and say I'm not racist. I know me, my friends know me. I mean, I think I feel like a lot of people that are logical would probably know. I'm sitting here in front of the camera lens talking to you about it. Those people are usually cowards. Those people usually hide behind keyboards. Those people usually hide behind something else. But after talking to friends, one of my homies brought up a really good point, man. He's like, listen, I know you. I know the way you are. I don't agree with the opinion, but I know you. We debate. We go back and forth. That's what it is, man. It's conversation. But you can't expect these people to know you. And that was probably my biggest mistake in making the video was 
was me thinking that, oh, these fools like me, they support me. They'll be, they'll be able to understand that this is just an opinion and it's just a conversation piece and it's just a topic for us to be able to go back and forth and banter and give our opinions and maybe see the other side, step outside of our box a little bit, kind of get some opinion over here, get some opinion over here and learn a little bit about each other. And for some people it did that. I mean, there was really a few different positions on it. There was people saying, just you, I'm unsubscribing, you're a racist, I'm out. Off. And for me, it was just kind of like, damn, I didn't really expect that, but I get it, man. You don't really know me like that. But on the flip side of the coin, you don't really know me like that. To make that assumption because it's one guy with one opinion on one racial topic. This doesn't span all the racial topics. It's not how I feel about every single topic. It's one topic. That was really kind of just what was crazy to me. But that was definitely one of the sentiments. And then you had people that maybe started out like that. It started out a little hateful or it started out just really angry. But then after some conversation and after going back and forth and seeing a little bit of each other's sides, it really became a great conversation to where we really respected each other. We were like, damn, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Oh, okay. I didn't see that point. I didn't think about that point. And it was really cool because it was something we could learn from and it changed it from a racial topic or something that was emotionally motivated to something that was just logically motivated. Just like two people that just differ in a Opinions. Like we just had a couple different opinions. Oh, we agreed on a couple things. We disagreed on a couple things and it was really no deeper than that. But it was cool because it flipped me around on some things and it flipped them around on some things, particularly the fact that like they could see that, oh, well maybe every white person that does have an opinion on something racial is not racist. But being dead honest, the funniest part of the whole shit was the people that said I'm racist or white supremacist or whatever, they don't understand that th those white supremacists and those racists, they don't like me either, bro. I'm an urban white kid. You know how many times I've been called wigger? How many times I get, well, why are you just over there acting black? Dude, they don't like me either. So I mean, as far as profiling and in that sense, I don't get any love from that side. Like in all honesty, I'm probably in the worst position ever because I get hate from that side and I get hate from this side saying that I'm racist just because I'm white. So I'm getting it, I'm getting it at all angles. I'm in the worst possible spot ever. I'm a white dude that has love for hip hop, urban culture, sneakers. I mean, like I said, I'm just, but really just to put a capper on the whole thing, man, I appreciate everybody that got involved in the conversation. I appreciate everybody that came from a logical place instead of just emotion. Even if it started out emotional, man, we were able to just talk Talk and through conversation really kind of just see a little bit about where the other perspective was, where the other person was coming from. And that's the whole point of this thing, man. It doesn't have to be, oh, well, you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and you have this opinion, well, then you're racist. It doesn't have to be that, man. You can have an opinion on one subject and not be racist. But yeah, thanks again to everybody that got involved in the conversation. I apologize to anyone that did get really deep with it and got super offended and left the channel or never wanted to see me again or hate me. It definitely wasn't my intention. So that wraps up that social experiment. I'm not sure if YouTube's gonna put the video back up or not. I honestly don't really care if they do because I think we got what we needed out of it. You know, we got some conversation and we got some good stuff. I mean, there was some negative stuff, I guess, but that wasn't my intention ever, man. My intention was always opinion and conversation. Anybody that thinks otherwise can take it how they want to take it. I don't know what to tell you. But let's go get these packages ready to send out and get this day popping. Instagram models eating up the cake, watch it go right to your bottom. You should get a new job, holla at McDonald's. Listen when I speak, baby, you can write a novel. The way the spit flows, put you in a pickle, cause I did it with no label. Got a crystal ball, but I need luck, cause I already got them pesos. The symbol, treat them like king codes, cause they only trying to copy me. Last I checked, you ain't some handsome devil with a college degree. But you think you can have your cake and eat it too? Well, tell me why these pretty women never leave with you. I even ask your mom and pops and they like we are. Prove that's why your girlfriend's screaming out my name. I call that Beetlejuice. Wow. Hopefully this still works. I swear the camera stays dropping. My lord. That was bad news. That was a that was a big tumble off the counter here. Bang. The mic mount got all bent. Damn, that's fine. Jeez. Well, I guess we'll find out if the camera's good when we go to edit the vlog. All right, if you guys are unfamiliar with how StockX works, man, you basically, it's really, really simple. You list the sneakers on there. Then once they sell the sneakers, they send you a shipping label. You print out the shipping label. You print out this paper. And then you put this paper inside the box. You put the shipping label on the outside of the box. And that's really it, man. So I'm going to put that inside the shoe box. 
and then I'll go ahead and take my shipping box. I'll put this shipping label on the outside and we'll send that off. So I'm gonna go drop these packages off. We'll come back, we'll take a look at some shoes. And then also I'm gonna show you guys some shoes that I have that I'm selling, just at retail. I don't have boxes for some of them, but I'll just give you guys a chance to be able to buy some shoes at retail because I'm just getting rid of them. So we'll do that when we get back. All right guys, we are back home. And before we get into the Jordan 1 Flyknit review, I told you we'd take a look at some shoes that I have, just extra pairs that I have. None of them have boxes because all the boxes were pretty much ruined in the fire. First up, Multicolor Ultra Boost. All these shoes are dead stock. All these pairs are dead stock. Like I said, I mean, they were in the fire. They don't have a box, but the shoes have not been worn. There's nothing scraped off on the inside. It's still all pristine. These ones particularly still have the tag on the inside, the Continental rubber tag. These are a size 12. Like I said, retail plus shipping on all these pairs, man. So the first person on each pair to reach out with me, DM me on any form of social media. Don't try to hit me in the comments on here just because I don't want to try to be exchanging personal info in the YouTube comments. Just hit me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, OMG, it's TTF on all of them. And we can get everything set up. I'll send you a PayPal invoice. You pay that. I'll send you the shoes. Ching, chang, bling, bling. Money ain't a thing, thing. Just like that. So here we go. Multicolor Ultra Boost size 12. 12. Then we got the black pair from the NMD gum pack not been worn DS as well They do kind of smell like smoke just a little bit. Yeah, just a, just a tad man Just a tad of a Thomas the franchise house burning down smoke smell But this is perfect for people that actually want to wear the shoes man You buy the shoes at retail you're gonna rock the shoes You don't need the box plus the smell gives the shoe a little character you know what I'm saying? Next up, the NMD R2 Bread DS as well. I actually love this pair and I was gonna black out the boost because I think that would just look stupid fire. So if nobody buys these, I'll probably just do that on another video. I'll just custom black out the boost, but I like that pair a lot. Next, these joints right here, the End Bodega Consortium Collabo. A Nike runner. You might remember we did the review on these. I said I was gonna sell them. I had a dude that wanted them. He said he was gonna buy them. Then he wasn't gonna buy them. Then he was out of contact. Then he got back in contact and then he hasn't hit me back. These are also a size 12. I think every single shoe I'm showing you is actually size 12. So they're all size 12. Super sick consortium insoles in there. That is the end bodega and Nike runner. Next up, this pair here. This is one of the most slept on Ultra Boost 3.0s, man. I love this pair. I just sold one of these on StockX. It's the one you saw earlier. This is another pair, but I don't have the box for it, so I can't sell them on StockX. But the ones I did sell on StockX went well above retail. I'm doing retail on these. Suede heel cup, leather insoles in there. You got the tan hits on the lace tips, leather cage. These are straight fire. They go with anything. They're just super clean. That is the Ultra Boost 3.0 Premium Gray. Next, another pair of my favorite 3.0s, man. The Parlay Ultra Boost. Super, super clean. All white outsole. I've definitely worn my pair of these more than any other Ultra Boost this summer. You've seen me up in the wave pool with these on. Last but not least, man, this is a unique, unique pair. I do have the box. As you can tell, there's like drywall is splattered all over it from the house fire there is no lid I don't know what happened to the lid that I was able to rescue these joints the shoes are in perfect condition I just don't have the lid for them and this is a unique pair of Jordan ones and I'll explain to you why or I'll actually show you why so you guys know the Jordan one yin yang pack right they came out, there was two different pairs. It was a white pair and there was a black pair. Well, your boy went ahead and copped both pairs. The black pair looks like that. I had a set that were just like this, a white and a black. This is the real yin yang pack, man. You rock one of each. I switched up the laces. You got one with the white laces, one with the black laces. Then I got the extras all in here. Dead stock, never been worn. But this is a super sick pair because of the fact that you're gonna get something unique, man. You're gonna get a yin yang pack, Jordan ones that nobody else really has, unless they bought both pairs of shoes and switched them like this. That was just the idea I had for the yin yang pack because I thought that's the true yin yang pack, man. I wish they would have just made them like this. I think that is super sick. I probably shouldn't, but I'm gonna go ahead and do these retail as well. I think retail, yeah, 160 on these. So $160, man. This is a steal. This is a chance to grab something totally different, totally off the cuff. I really like the Yin Yang Pack concept. I think I just turned it into something a little more dope. Everything is flipped on both pairs of shoes. Super, super ill. So yeah, the real deal, Yin Yang ones, 160 size 12. Plus you get a box with no top and some drywall splatter on the box. I mean, that is... That's as unique as it gets, man. Now let's get into the shoe review, man. This is the Jordan 1 Fly Knit Bread. This shoe actually sold out super quick on the sneakers app Saturday morning. It also sold out at probably most stores. I mean, at all of our shoe stores it did. I got super lucky with Dallas. I walked in about three o'clock in the afternoon. Me and Dallas, we hit Foot Locker and they had a size 12 on display. It was the last pair. I got super lucky. Dallas got super salty. Not, not super salty, but he definitely wanted the pair. He was a little sad, but I think he said he was gonna pay resale on him. If he hasn't already. Currently resale isn't anything crazy, about 200 to 230 depending on your size. These ones here are size 12 and they were $180 retail. Box label for you. Bang, dang, it's been a minute since I spun the Jordan 1s, man. That was clean. These are a little bit harder because the shoe is high up, but we got it done. There they are, look around the shoe. Fly knit, 
Jordan 1 bread. I already did lace my pair the way I'm gonna lace them. I just laced them all the way up and then come out the top with a little bit of room for the strings to hang there. Now when pictures leaked to this shoe a few months back and there was rumors that these were gonna come out, there was a lot of different people that thought they were dope. A lot of people were hating on them, saying your grandma knitted them, saying they ruined an OG classic colorway. For me, none of that stuff bothered me, man. I actually really like the look of it. Plus, I think it's dope for Nike to innovate, man. Yeah, they're using the same Jordan 1 silhouette, but it's totally different materials. The materials definitely are more comfortable than a normal Jordan 1, and we'll get into that in a second. But overall, man, I really, really like the shoe. I'm very impressed with it, very happy with it. I don't mind the $180 price point. That's $20 up from the normal $160 that Jordan 1s cost. So what's really dope about this shoe is not only the color, but every different like section of the shoe has a different type of fly knit or knit. So in the toe box, you've got this like almost like netting type of fly knit there. And then you've got a solid, more like prime knit around uh, the toe box there. Then it goes into this really tightly knitted fly knit here. And then it goes back to the netting style, but it's black instead of the red here. It does kind of have a red paneling behind it to seal off. So I guess moisture and stuff like that doesn't get in. And then as you move to the back, it's got this really tightly woven knit, the same style as this, but it's red. And that goes all the way around the back in the heel cup. Super, super dope. Really, really soft to the touch. As you notice here, they did keep the swooshes leather on both sides. And then they also have the Air Jordan patch up here or the logo, that is all leather as well. Moving around to the laces and the tongue, you get some flat black wax laces. Nice there, I like the shine that the wax laces put off. It doesn't come with any extra laces, just the one pair. As we move up the tongue, it's definitely way more of a stretchy tongue than any Jordan 1s. Like this tongue could be pulled out super high. The tongue is very, very stretchy, very breathable, super soft, feels good on the foot. I really like the material they used for this tongue. You have a high quality leather patch, Nike Air on the tongue here. Very soft, good quality leather. And then on the inside, you have like a little spool. It's kind of a fly knit spool. And then it goes down into the 1985. Moving to the inside, and probably my favorite part of the shoe, because this is what makes the shoe so comfortable, is the leather. The whole thing is a really plush, nice, soft leather on the inside as well as the insole. All leather in there, Nike Air stamped into the leather insole, and it's super soft. It's um, it's almost like, it reminds me of the Bait EQTs, how it's leather and it's ortholite. It feels the exact same. It feels like an ortholite leather insole, just like those Bait EQTs. And then down here, when you put your hand in here, man, you can just feel how soft and plush the leather is on the inside of here. Makes for a very comfortable fit in the shoe. I did go true to size in a 12. That's the same size I get in all my Jordan 1s, 12, true to size. Also on the inside, you'll notice that it does have this brand and kind of like the 2016 band ones. You've got the size 12, 1985, 2017. Same kind of deal with the branding there. Moving down to the midsole and the outsole, everything there is standard Jordan 1. This actually looks like the same exact from the Brad 2016s. I mean, the color, everything's the exact same. This is actually quite a bit darker than the reds up here. That is really about all on these, man. Like I said, I'm very impressed, very happy to have the very first colorway and the first fly knit Jordan 1. Because of how much more comfortable these are, I think people are really gonna like them. Also, I think this is gonna become a staple with Jordan 1s and Nike. I think they're gonna come out with some Royals and some other colorways in this Jordan 1 fly knit. And who knows, I mean, they may push it out to other silhouettes, I'm not sure. But for me personally, I think these are a big win for Nike. I think that they did a great job on these. And prime knit, fly knit, lit knit, all that stuff is the future, man. It's where it's going. So so it's cool to see Nike use that technology on a classic silhouette. Did you guys cop these? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Would you pay resale? Let me know in the comments below, man. As always, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. I love the shit out of y'all, man. And I will see you fools tomorrow. <laughs>